this album, uh, like when I when I first heard it, and the more I hear it, I feel like the only like appropriate question to ask you after listening to it is, "Are you okay? Like, is something wrong? <laughs> it, like, like it's like gut wrenching. It, it's both beautiful. It's very beautiful, but it's like parts that hurt a little bit. You know it's what just, I mean? Yeah. It's man. I was like. Cause for Cherry Bomb, I, I, I purposely was like, I don't want to get personal at all. Like, I'm gonna just make songs. Yeah. It's just all this is a song. And in this one, I was like, all right, let me write down every feeling. Through one of the most vulnerable hip hop albums released in the 2010s, 2017's Flower Boy was a project that would change the entire scope of Tyler's career. This album is jazzier, more relaxing, and more vulnerable compared to any piece of work Tyler had put out prior. To dissect this project, let's first look at the name Flower Boy by Tyler the Creator. The name Flower Boy represents Tyler's internal struggle with his sexuality. Up until this point, Tyler never directly confronted this in his music just barely hinting at it. Tyler reveals on this project that he's in fact bisexual, which is the spark of controversy among his fans for this record. After the mixed reception on Cherry Bomb, Tyler stated how he changed his approach when working on this album. The opener track, Forward, establishes this direction right off the get-go. We're greeted to the brand new sound of this project that was teased at the end of Cherry Bomb. A slow but spacious and warm instrumental is what we're greeted with as we start this journey experiencing Tyler's emotions. The emotions on this project are ones of isolation, anxiety, and loneliness in the summer heat. Boredom is a song akin to the feeling of being alone in your room on a hot summer day. You're staring at a wall, you made no plans with your friends, yet it's a gorgeous and mellow song that's just relaxing to listen to. With the simple message, find some time to do something. I just, I just knew if this album wasn't good, I would be fucked. That's how I felt, and some people would disagree, but I'm like, man, I'm not, I'm nothing right now. You felt that way coming off Cherry Bomb? Yeah, yeah, because everyone hated it. Flower Boy, in a way, saved Tyler's career. People didn't like Cherry Bomb, and as he said, he felt like nothing around that time. Tyler even once said that if he started at Flower Boy, he would be a god, which rings true considering his preceding work. The way Flower Boy is able to articulate emotions such as loneliness and sadness into the most gorgeous and jazzy instrumentals is nothing short of impressive. The album can be very difficult to listen to at times due to how emotionally impactful it can be. This is a huge reason why it became such a success. Garden Shed is another strong example of this as it is one of the most vulnerable songs on the album. The garden shed in question being used as a metaphor for Tyler coming out of the closet. On the track, Tyler directly confronts his sexuality, describing how he had grown up asking himself if it was a phase or not. November is a beautiful nostalgic track, with anxiety ridden lyrics asking what if questions such as what if my music too weird for the masses, and I'm only known for tweets more than beats, or all my day ones turn to three fours because of track seven. Fuck, what if I get stuck? What if I get comfortable? I gotta keep it buck fifty. The general themes of Flower Boy revolve around topics such as depression, loneliness, sexuality, love, friendship, materialism, and fame. Tyler uses the metaphor of cars on this album to talk about some of these things, describing how lonely he is using materialism as a way to cope for it. The entire album also seems to be connected as a car ride, as there are different car noises in between certain tracks, including the interlude Sometimes, which is a radio call-in. You can have everything you want in the world, but if you have no one to truly share it with, it's like you have no connection to anything. 911 and Mr. Lonely, along with Boredom, directly confront Tyler's loneliness. Tyler compares people calling his number to 911, feeling as if people never call to check up on him, but only to ask him for things or call him the event of emergency. Mr. Lonely, the second part, becomes a lot more fast-paced, with Tyler seemingly dissing himself throughout it. They say the loudest in the room is weak, that's what they assume, but I disagree. I say the loudest in the room is probably the loneliest in the room, that's me, attention seeker, public speaker. Oh my god, that boy is so fucking lonely. Boredom even has a subtle reference to Tyler's sexuality with the bars. Hi y'all, you only hit me all day, what the fuck is the problem, is it me cause I'm not solved, I'm bored. The awkwardness at the end, indicating that was not what he was about to say. The word he would have used to rhyme with day from the previous bar would have been gay. Of course, other tracks on the album aren't as subtle, with Tyler seemingly bragging about kissing white boys since 2004 on I Ain't Got Time. Tyler's overall feelings about coming out are projected in different ways through Flower Boy. Sometimes he feels braggadocious about it, other most times he feels ridden with anxiety and loneliness because of it. It's no secret that Tyler's early career depended mostly on shock value and controversy. He'd come a long way from the edgy lyrics about raping and murdering people on Bastard and Goblin. 
Flower Boy was a way for Tyler to prove himself artistically and showcase his maturity through his production and lyrics. We saw glimpses of this in Wolf and Cherry Bomb, but the progression was natural. Tyler finally accepts himself and shares himself for who he truly is. With the no alter ego to hide behind, it is a project that separates itself from his discography. It's nothing but emotion in its rawest form. That's why I believe the project was so successful, because it was able to resonate with people's emotions on a level that Tyler hadn't reached before. Flower Boy also greeted Tyler with a more mainstream success, but a more favorable light this time around. Tyler was finally blossoming as an artist. To make this project even more personal, it was also produced entirely by Tyler, which is a common theme that we'll see from now on through most of his future projects. This really starts to become prevalent and showcases Tyler's incredible producing talent, making each track feel intimate and dynamic. Tyler made the beat for I Ain't Got Time off the project, initially for Kanye West, during the recording sessions for West's seventh studio album, The Life of Pablo. However, Ye declined it and the beat was sent to Nicki Minaj, who after a month, also turned it down. Glitter was apparently originally written for Justin Bieber, but Bieber did not return any of Tyler's calls, so Tyler kept it. The track See You Again, which became one of Tyler's biggest hits, was written for former One Direction member Zayn Malik, but was kept after Malik rejected the song twice. The track Who Dat Boy was also rejected by rapper Schoolboy Q. What's ironic is that while all these artists rejected Tyler's collaboration requests, Flower Boy ended up being his most successful project at that point, debuting at number 2 on the Billboard US 200. That speaks volumes considering his incredible success after that with Igor and Call Me If You Get Lost, which would make him a Grammy winning number 1 artist. But we're not that far yet into Tyler's story. Considering how vulnerable this project is, these rejections by big names Tyler received while he put the project together make it even more impactful. The final track on the album is simply an instrumental with a simple message in the title, Enjoy Right Now Today, that ends the project on a high note. Flower Boy was the project that proved Tyler's writing and production capabilities, as well as showed his ability to be vulnerable and to accept himself for who he truly is. Flower Boy marked the beginning of a new era that would showcase the maturity in Tyler's music and character. The Tyler the creator that we know today, that we appreciate for artistic versatility and vulnerability. After a phenomenal project, what would come next? Well, we would have to wait two years. And now, he's coming. <laughs>